Yo, welcome back to another Shopify video. In today's video, we're covering all of the product page sections you need to have on your website to increase your conversion rate and ultimately make more sales. Let's jump in, have a look, and find out. Now, the first section on the product page we'll cover is kind of above the fold area, so where the product images are, where the product title is, where the kind of bread marks are, and also where the add to cart button is. So then we'll move down to the sections underneath it, kind of above the fold. And from there, we'll be able to find out all those extra sections that you need to add to your website. Now, the first section we want to have on this website is the breadcrumbs. As you see with all birds here, if we zoom in, we can see that they've got um, some great breadcrumbs here. We've got home, men's sale, and sale apparel for these t-shirts here. And this will obviously change for the product that you're viewing. So if you're viewing shoes, then that will obviously be shoes or most likely home, men's shoes, you know, waterproof shoes, and then the product. So we will definitely want to have some breadcrumbs here. On Shopify, the way that they default set up the breadcrumbs and on most themes, it's not necessarily the best way. Now there are a bunch of apps that you need to have to manage the breadcrumbs on your store. So I'll drop those apps in the description. So be sure to have a look at those if you're looking to level up your breadcrumbs. Now the second item you want on the section, if your store has multiple brands and you say you have a bunch of different products like this example on screen with Darut, then you want to have a brands uh, link. So you want to uh, obviously show which brand it is. So for this one, it's Fubuki. I believe it is and then you want to have a link to that specific collection so what that's going to allow the customer to do is when they land on this say this product and they want to see a bit more um, from that specific brand or they want to see some different colors or whatever whatever they want to find more about this brand they can click on that link there as you see with this example the little arrow moves so it's a you know pretty obvious that you can click through to it and then when they click through to it as you see on screen here they can see all the different products that that brand specifically has now the third item for the section is having the product title so this is a pretty much self-explanatory so explaining what the product does or is um, is super key so keep it super minimal so as you see on screen here with this one it just it's simple it shows exactly what it is and then it has a bit of a point of difference or what maybe what the technology is within this bottle so keep it super short and simple try not to make it two lines long but, and if it is two lines long then you might have to reduce the size of the header or the size of the title uh, but definitely try to keep it on one line. We want to reduce the amount of uh, extra space it takes up on that kind of crucial area above the fold. And now the next item would be the product reviews part. So as you see here, we've got the stars and then we've got the review count, which is perfect. So having those there just below the price or below the title is best. The way that people digest it is they look at the title and they look at how much it costs and then they go, okay, I'm still, I'm still interested because I'm still kind of navigating and digesting it. And then they'll see the stars and see, shit, there's like a, quite a few reviews here. So we want to place those there. If we had them any lower, then it kind of falls out of place when people, when it starts to get put around the, the variations or the add to cart area. Um, so keep that nice and high. It's, and it's pretty standard for most stores. And that's where customers have been trained to look for that certain information. So let's keep it super simple and have it there. Now we want to make sure these stars pop, so have a nice bright color. You can match it with your brand colors. Just make sure it's visible enough. As you see with this example, it's orange. It's slightly different to the blue they run for the, throughout the rest of the website. So it stands out and you know brings a lot of attention to those five, over 5,000 reviews. And then when you click on that, it will obviously drop you down like this example, which is what you want. So you want to make sure customers can click on that and it drops them down to the review section so they can read all the reviews. And that comes on to the next item of the section is the price and the pay later option. So again, on this website here, you can see they've done it really well. They've integrated this element to be you know, just the right size. Um, they've got the price here and then they've got the four installments or um, the different pay later option messaging. Um, so if you click on this, it's gonna open up a pop-up, you know, explaining that a little bit further. I would like to see this messaging on the same line as the price, just to again, reduce and crunch down the amount of scrolls, especially on mobile, um, that users have to make. So try to keep that on the same line as the price, but underneath is, is just fine for now, but definitely having that information around the title and the review stars and count is really important. Now the next section is optional, however I like to add it to most of my stores just to give the customer a glimpse into the description. So as you see on screen here, again with Darut, we have a short description here that has a read more button. So if we click that read more button, it drops us down to the main description here that the customer can digest. So we obviously can't include the whole, all of the description. And so you should have a decent length product description for your product. So we can't include that all on here, otherwise people will be scrolling, scrolling, scrolling unless you run it as a kind of drop down here if they click on say read more it you know expands the text but for this specific website you know their descriptions are quite long so having that isn't really the case but i like to include a little short description here 
that gives the customer you know a, a quick glance and maybe a bit more information without taking too much space so keep this about two to three lines max and then have a read more link a very clear link that customers can click to to learn a bit more now for the short description here is another example from nomad goods so if we click show more it's going to expand the text so a great little example of if you have a short description the way to show it is this way so i really like the look and feel of that and it's super minimal it looks really good on the website and now the next section is the variation selector so back to this website here we can see that they've got multiple variations and sizes and different types so just having those pretty clear and simple is what we want so if you have color variations you definitely want to go for um, either like a circular color selector or ideally some small thumbnail images like we've done with the root here you can see that all the different colors here uh, as an image so for apparel for example it makes it a lot easier for the customer to digest exactly what the color is so if we have for example back to this website here if we have the little thumbnail kind of colors then they might not be super accurate to what the actual color is say for example if you have apparel it's pretty hard to match all the blues with um, you know all your blue t-shirts so having some thumbnail images there probably would be a better option if it's especially with apparel um, but you can get away with having something like this as well. So then for the other variations as well, I don't know what kind of variations you have for your product, but I like how with the size variations I've got uh, as a selector here rather than a drop down. I personally like having, well, I know that the selectors instead of the drop downs work a lot more effectively with conversions. So be sure to, if you don't have a huge amount of variations with a specific variant, then be sure to again have a selector like they've done here. But if you've got, you know, a shit ton of variations, more than five or six, then you probably have to put that in as a drop down, otherwise it's going to get too messy. So um, for sizing for like apparel, for example, again, you can have small, medium, large, extra large or whatever as these selectors here without a user having to go through a drop down. Because then if they go, if we have a drop down, they're going to have to drop down and make two clicks um, to essentially choose a variation before they even click the add to cut button. We want to keep the amount of clicks a user has to make and interactions with the website to a minimum for them to purchase, that's the key. So now coming to the next item of this section is having a quantity selector. So as you see on screen here, we've got a pretty easy plus and minus. You don't need to go over complex of this, but make sure there is plus and minus buttons. Again, we're trying to reduce the amount of uh, interactions that a person has to make with the website to make a purchase. So super simple and easy. You can add this next to the add to cart button. I've seen that done quite a few times if you you know if you really want to condense down the element but for this example we'll just keep it above because um, it's not going to be a huge biggie but you can trial you can play with it you can have it next to the add to cut button um, but definitely not below the add to cut button we kind of want the add to cut button to be the finish of all the interactions someone has to make to make a purchase and then the rest of the information below the add to cut button is you know add on information or you know what what about if i need to know about shipping information or returns information that kind of comes secondary to these main variation selectors quantity selectors and the add to cut button and even the wish list that all and all that sub information comes below the add to cart button and then the next item is obviously the add to cart button so you can add an icon as you see on screen here just to kind of emphasize a little bit more about the add to cart button now we want to make the color of this add to cart button super clear and simple that also matches your brand look and feel so for this website uh, it's a lot of uh, dark blues and greens um, that bring you know call to actions or attentions to the website so you know we match that in there that changes color when you hover on it and the little icon there just emphasizes that you know once you click the button it's going to add something to the cart and as you see when we add it to the cart there it opens up a slide out cart so and now the next one on this section here is having uh, that the item is in stock or the product is in stock so having this information here just confirms to the customer that you know the products in stock and then it ships within a certain date so for this website here as you see um, with these keyboards here it's in stock and it ready and it ships within one to two business days so that instantly confirms a couple of things that you know they've got the product they're ready to ship it within a couple of business days so i haven't got any concerns that you know are they drop shipping it or um, are they, have they run out of stock or any of those kind of concerns are cleared up with that simple line of text there as well now the next one is pretty similar so it's another line of text with an icon and that's just the shipping information and kind of returns information so you can try to gel the shipping and returns information uh, into the same line if you want to but for this example here we split it up to two lines just because it slightly gets slightly long once you have uh, two different lines of text so we've got the free shipping over a certain price and then you've got the returns information there as well so just with those two sections again we're again clearing up and making it super clear to the customer about the shipping information 
and then about the returns kind of questions and information. So this will definitely having this right under the add to cart, if someone kind of scrolls or looks down, then they're probably looking for a bit more information before they click the add to cart button. And most likely that's gonna be something around the shipping or returns or maybe a bit more information about the product, uh, say the description. Um, so we're addressing those kind of first two concerns with these, these first two sections here as well. And now if you do have like a pickup location or a physical store, then having uh, some pickup information there as well, as you see with Darut, um, with the pickup locations or a link to at least, you know, where those locations are on the website um, is super helpful. So maybe your product requires a bit more of an explanation or they want to pick it up in store like today. So having those options there is, is super smart. So we could probably expand a little bit more on that kind of location finder but that's mainly more for stores that have a lot of physical locations or stockers. So that's probably for another video as a location finder. And now that pretty much covers all of that kind of first above the fold product information section. Now we're scrolling down the page. So we've got to think about what the user intention is. They're looking for a bit more information, you know, potentially want, they want to be sold on the product a little bit more. Um, so this is the perfect section to, I guess, dive into a bit more detail about the product. So this is the section where we, you know, dive in and split out the product. So for example, with Vessi here, you can see they expand the product, talk about the features and benefits of the, the you know, the top layer, the inner sole, um, or the cushion, and then the sole. So it kind of breaks down the product, uh, gives a bit more detail about the, the finer details and features. And this is a great place. So this, so this will be different for what your products are. Some products require quite an advanced or kind of a, you know, some products require a little bit more of an advanced kind of uh, layout like this specific product, just showing or breaking out the product. Um, however, some products may even require something as simple as all birds have here, where you just have, you know, left text with the right image that, you know, for this example, talks about the fit and feel. And then we go down to the next section here, which is again, diving deeper into the product around the materials and the left image, right text. So you can keep it super simple like this if you're first starting out um, with these extended sections. So when it comes to this extended section to anything kind of below the main core first section that we talked about, these are achievable through Shopify 2.0. So if you're not on Shopify 2.0 theme, you need to get over to Shopify 2.0. So I will be doing a separate video from migrating your current theme to the new Shopify 2.0 theme so you can add in all these sections without having a bunch of development time. And so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified when that video comes out in the future. And so here's another example of the product breakdown um, done on this specific website. So as you see here, um, they've got a couple of different features on the bottle. And as you see, when we scroll a little bit more down here, they go a little bit deeper into the features because they understand if the user is scrolling, they're looking for more information, potentially a bit more detail on how the product works. For this example, it's how the self-cleaning and how it's worry-free. So they go a little bit more in detail on how that works. And then again, we're scrolling even more, um, you know, showcasing that there's got different colors, different sizes, um, how the lid works as well. And then we're coming down to the review section. And so the next section I would have on the product page is having a virtual shopper section. So nobody really talks about this, but um, as you see on screen here with Lululemon, they've got this awesome little virtual shopper section here. So, and so what this section does is it directs people to a booking page that allows the user to book in a time to you know, run through any questions they have. So for example, if your product's a little bit more complicated or say it's over it's a couple hundred dollars um, for average order value, or your, or your product's quite expensive, um, you know, customers might have quite a few questions that they would typically open up a live chat or even give you a call or an email. So we want to make it super obvious that they can get in front, you know, face to face with us so we can answer any questions. So having a virtual shopper section like this um, is, is a great option. So Lululemon are always at the forefront with e-commerce development and, you know, trialing new things. So this is definitely something you can give a try. So if we click book now, for example, it's going to take us through to the virtual shopper page. Um, and then you can essentially give give a call, uh, do a live chat, book an appointment even, start an Apple message. So you can have something very similar to this. I would even you know just copy essentially what they've done here, have a dedicated page, and then uh, link that into the product page section as you see here. So, and a nice little bonus that not many e-commerce stores currently do that I think in 2023 they're going to definitely have to do now that a lot of people are shifting from you know buying in store to online but still want the buying in store experience. So. 
Now the next section I would have is if your product has technical specifications. So as you see on screen here again, we can see that this product has some technical specs that most products do. So having a bit more of a detailed technical specification section is useful for, you know, if your product has quite a few different specifications. Now if you only just got like a couple of sizes or, um, you know, some weights information and stuff, you can usually include that in the description. But if your product has a bit more detail, then be sure to have a section like this as well. Now another section is having some Instagram photos or lifestyle content. So this could just be some something simple like an image gallery like you see on this one as well. Um, you can see here, you can see the product. So it's not a generic image, it's the actual exact product images of what you're viewing. Um, you can see some lifestyle imagery here of the product being used, some different sizes. Um, and yeah, just a great way to showcase the different imagery in it as well as potentially some uh, information to the Instagram so the customer can potentially get a bit more information but we want to keep it super simple and clean I love how they've got this image gallery here the only thing I'd change is I'd have this so you can zoom in on these images or um, you know blow them up a little bit so you can see a bit more detail and now I would shy away from Instagram apps that would ultimately slow down your website and you know have to feed in or have to uh, fetch the Instagram images every time someone views the product page or the homepage for example so yeah just try to keep it as simple as possible with an image gallery will do the job here now the next section I would have would be a you may also like section or related products or accessories types of product feed. So on this section here we're essentially trying to achieve or we're trying to showcase different products that are relative to what they're viewing. So if they're viewing for example skis, we probably want to show skis or ski bindings or ski boots for example um, and not random other products. So the key here is to show relevant products or related products as much as possible. So you can do this through natively through your theme, however it's probably better to have an app like Rebuy for example, I'll put a link in the description of that specific app we used across, for example this one here. So as you see here you can scroll through the different related products um, that is relative to this product page that we're viewing. And the purpose of that is if they're viewing a product and it's not necessarily what they are after, they can quickly jump to the next product page and make a purchase. So we want to kind of put that in, in their face because they might have landed from or directly to the product page. Your friend might have sent them a link, but you know, that might not be the specific style or color or um, you know model or brand that they're after. However, um, if we do a good enough job, we should be able to show that product in the related section as well. Now, another great section to have on your product pages is having a frequently asked questions section or like a frequently asked questions drop down section. As you see on screen here again, we've got one from High Smile, so just answering some key questions relative to that specific product page again. So they're not just random kind of generic questions, they're you know directly related to the product. So, for example, you know, some common questions here, I would probably have a few more than two. So I would have maybe have five or six, um, and it's just answering those que common questions you get through customer service, and which is ultimately going to reduce the amount of uh, customer service inquiries you have coming to the website. And now the next section, as you probably anticipated, is having a review section, as we see on this website here as well. We can see it's super clean and simple here. So we want to have a nice review section. For example, if you use Okendo reviews, we can have a display like this. Most most review platforms have some sort of a really nice looking display you can include on your product page so you see that's usually really easy as well and you can customize the look and feel but i love the look of how these guys have done it and here's a slightly different layout of how to do the review section with Darut as well you see it's slightly a bit more longer and has a bit more information with the custom of being able to upload some photos um, and then there's easier, even a question and answers section on this review element with Okendo as well so I'd highly recommend that and I'd highly recommend Okendo as well so be sure to check out my link in the description to check out Okendo and potentially sign up um, in my opinion I think that's the best review platform I've seen them all I've used them all now the whole purpose of the product page is to inform the user with all the information that they need to make a purchase so that's really important to remember as we design and add different things through the product page is that we don't want to pull away from the ultimate conversion is them adding to cart and making a purchase so we must deliver them all the key information they need at the top and then we want to slowly reveal extra information um, later on down the page because as they scroll down further down the page and get say 50 60 70 percent down the page they haven't found necessarily the information that they need to make a purchase so we want to try to address that and we also want to create the product page in such a way that it's almost like a standalone landing page so they don't have to go to the about us section to find or learn a bit more about the brand's sustainability values for example or they don't have to go to the frequently asked questions to learn a bit more about that or the freight information so we want to keep it as a centralized hub um, and a landing page so you can send anyone there and if they're interested in the product they can find all the information they need to make a purchase just on that page 
and at the right time as well. So that's really important. So, so the steps I've outlined today have been categorized or prioritized with the most important first. So I've thought about it lots and we've tested it lots in regards to the most important first. So definitely apply what you think is most important as well and test it and see with your Hotjar recordings, for example, what people click on and what they look at and what they don't and then adjust accordingly. So for example, some stores might find more success with the frequently asked questions section higher up the product page because their product potentially has a lot more questions than, than a normal product then um, so, so then the element will be a lot more effective higher up rather than a clothing store for example might find more success with having a related or you may also like section higher up the product page so be sure to take this and apply it with uh, your understanding of who your customers are and how they interact and then test 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 so, so that pretty much covers all of the sections on the product page that I could think of if there are any extras be sure to add them in the comment section below however if you follow most of these sections and apply them to your website you'll pretty much be sorted so I hope you enjoyed today's video and be sure to like and subscribe this video it'll make my day and look out for future content coming this week we're going to dive a little bit more into some of the CRO knowledge within um, kind of the header through to the cart and through to the checkout so be sure to stay tuned and look out for those videos and thank you so much for watching have a great day. Bye-bye.
now I would shy away from inst- and now I would shy away from Instagram apps that would ultimately slow down your website and you know have to feed in or have to uh, fetch the Instagram images every time someone views the product page or the homepage, for example. So yeah, just try to keep it as simple as possible with an image gallery will do the job here. Now the next one would be like a. Now the next section I would have would be a you may also like section or related products or accessories types of product feed. So on this section here, we're essentially trying to achieve or we're trying to showcase different products that are relative to what they're viewing. So if they're viewing, for example, skis, we probably want to show skis or ski bindings or ski boots, for example, um, and not random other products. So the key here is to show relevant products or related products as much as possible. So you can do this through natively through your theme. However, it's probably better to have an app like Rebuy, for example. I'll put a link in the description of that specific app we use across, for example, this one here. So as you see here, you can scroll through the different related products um, that is relative to this product page that we're viewing. And essentially from that, and then from that, the customer can, and so the purpose of that is if the customer doesn't really, and the purpose of that is if they're viewing product and it's not necessarily what they are after, they can quickly jump to the next product page and make a purchase. So we want to kind of put that in, in their face because they might have landed from or directly to the product page. Your friend might have sent them a link, but you know, that might not be the specific style or color or um, you know model or brand that they're after. However, um, if we do a good enough job, we should be able to show that product in the related section as well. <coughs> Now another great section to have on your product pages is having a frequently asked questions section or like a frequently asked questions drop down section. As you see on screen here again, we've got one from High Smile. So just answering some key questions relative to that specific product page again. So they're not just random kind of generic questions that are, you know, directly related to the product. So for example, you know, some common questions here, I would probably have a few more than two. So I would have Now the next section, as you probably expected, is having a review section here. And now the next section, as you probably anticipated, is having a review section, as we see on this website here as well. We can see it's super clean and simple here. So we want to have a nice review section. For example, if you use Okendo Reviews, we can have a display like this. Most, most review platforms have some sort of... A really nice looking display you can include on your product page so you see that's usually really easy as well and you can customize the look and feel but i love the look of how these guys have done it and here's it and here's a slightly different and here's a slightly different layout of how to do the review section with Darut as well you see it's slightly a bit more longer and has a bit more information with the custom of being able to upload some photos um, and then there's easier, even a question and answers section on this review element with Okendo as well. So I'd highly recommend that and I'd highly recommend Okendo as well. So be sure to check out my link in the description to check out Okendo and potentially sign up. Um, in my opinion, I think that's the best review platform. I've seen them all, I've used them all and I've actually done a review roundup. I've, I've also done a review platform roundup um, of the best review platform. So I've done a separate video on that. So be sure to like, so be sure to check out my channel and subscribe to the channel to have a look at that one as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Now this will be coming back to the start. Now the whole purpose of the product page is to inform the user with all the information that they need to make a purchase. So that's really important to remember as we design and add different things through the product page is that we don't want to pull away from the ultimate conversion is them adding to cart and making a purchase. So we must deliver them all the key information they need at the top and then we want to slowly reveal extra information um, later on down the page because as they scroll down further down the page and get say 50, 60, 70% down the page, they haven't found necessarily the information that they need to make a purchase. So we want to try to address that. And we also want to create the product page in such a way that it's almost like a standalone landing page. So they don't have to go to the about us section to find or learn a bit more about the brand's sustainability values, for example, or they don't have to go to the frequently asked questions to learn a bit more about that or the freight information. So we want to keep it as a centralized hub um, and a landing page so you can send anyone there. And if they're interested in the product, they can find all the information they need to make a purchase just on that page and at the right time as well. So that's really important. So the steps I've outlined today, uh, and the, so the steps are, so the steps I've learned, so the steps I've outlined, it, so the steps I've outlined, it, so the steps I've outlined today have been categorized or prioritized with the most important first. So when you're adding these to your store, think of, so I've thought of, so I've thought about it lots and we've tested it lots in regards to the most important first. So definitely apply what you think is most important as well and test it and see with your hot jar recordings, for example, what people click on and what they look at and what they don't and then adjust accordingly. So for example, some stores might find more success with their frequently asked questions section higher up the product page because their product potentially has a lot more questions and than a normal product, then um, so, so then the element will be a lot more effective higher up rather than a clothing store, for example, might have more rather than a clothing store, for example, rather than a clothing store, for example, might find more success with having a related or you may also like section higher up the product page. So be sure to take this and apply it with uh, your understanding of who your customers are and how they interact and then test, test, test. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump in and have a look. <clears throat> Third recording sign, three, two, one. Sweet, so that sweet, so that pretty much covers all of the sections on the product page that I could think of. If there are any extras, be sure to add them in the comment section below. However, if you follow this, you'll be most likely covering every single However, if you follow most of these sections and apply them to your website, you'll pretty much be sorted. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and be sure to like and subscribe this video. It'll make my day and look out for future content coming this week. We're going to dive a little bit more into some of the CRO knowledge within um, kind of the header through to the cart and through to the checkout. So be sure to stay tuned and look out for those videos. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye. <coughs>